today, today's vlog is going to be uh, basically part two of the eating healthy vlogging mini series of sorts that we have here on the channel. And in the first vlog, which I'll make sure to link in the description below, we really talked about the mindset and preparing yourself to get into eating healthy and having a healthier lifestyle. Today, however, we're gonna focus more so on just a few general tips for actually eating healthy. And I'm gonna go over what I actually eat in my diet for you guys. Now, again, this is a point that I made in the first video, just because my diet works for me does not mean that it's going to work for you. It may not even be appealing to you. So if you want to change your lifestyle and your eating habits and whatnot, then you definitely need to find a diet that works for you. Just because this works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So I have a few more points that I wanna make at the end of the video and maybe an announcement or two. So make sure you stick around to the very end, but I really wanna dive into this because I got all my groceries sitting here on the counter and I don't want anything to spoil. And I know it's kind of contradictory for me to be doing a video about eating healthy with all this alcohol behind me, but just ignore that, it's it's okay. I only ever really drink whenever I have friends over. It's just there more so for display. Moving right along, there are two different kinds of breakfast that I eat. There's one kind of breakfast that I eat on days that I go to the gym, and there's another on days that I have rest days when I don't go to the gym or I don't have a lot of physical activity. On days that you go to the gym, you need to have more energy, you need to have more fuel for your body to burn off. So you need to eat things that are a little more filling and maybe even have a few more carbohydrates in them. Some people like to have like a piece of toast and a banana before they go to the gym. What I generally eat is I will have a small bowl of Cheerios, not Honey Nut Cheerios, just Cheerios, and I'll toss in a pack of apples as well. So small bowl of Cheerios, pack of apples. Let me say it again, small bowl of Cheerios. I know sometimes when it comes to your favorite breakfast cereals, people like to pour themselves a big old Jethro Bodine bowl of cereal, but it's gotta be a small bowl of cereal and uh, I generally like to have a pack of apples. If you just wanna buy an apple or just buy apple slices, that's fine. I like to buy things in like little packages like this because it helps my portion sizes. So I know that, oh, this is all I need. I'm not gonna overeat, I'm not gonna undereat. This is just enough. But whatever works for you is perfectly fine. I like to use the flavored water that is known as 0% milk. Just because it has zero fat, it's honestly the healthiest milk out there for you. And it's one of those things where it's like, if you grew up on whole milk or 2% milk, I grew up on 2% milk. It was kind of a weird change at first, but now it's one of those things where it's like, no matter what milk I drink, all milk tastes the same. So keep in mind that mindset of your body is a car. You're gonna fuel it up just enough to get to your next next gas station. So all you need is just enough to get you to that workout because after your workout, that's when you're gonna have your post-workout meal and it might be a little more filling. Now in days when I don't go to the gym and I don't have as much physical activity, I don't have as many carbohydrates. When it comes to consuming all these different types of nutrients and whatnot, it's one of those things where it's like, your body needs all of them. Your body needs carbs, your body needs sodium, your body needs all this. It just comes down to regulating how much and you put into your body and how much you burn off. So on days that you're not as physically active, on days that you don't go to the gym, don't consume as much carbohydrates. But keep in mind what I just said, your body still needs carbohydrates, but you can get carbs from other places. It doesn't have to be just from starches. Things like broccoli and apples have carbs in them as well. Carbs are pretty much almost everywhere. Getting back on point, on days when I don't go to the gym, I will go ahead and scramble up two eggs and I will whip out two pieces of bacon as well. Now, going back to what I was talking about when it comes to different diets for different people, me personally, I like to eat this lower sodium turkey bacon. There are some people out there who do not, they cannot stand the taste of turkey bacon. It has to be pork bacon, it has to be this and that, yada, yada, yada. For me, I like this because it's the healthiest option and I can still sit down and eat something that tastes like bacon without having to sit there and stress and say, oh, there's so much fat and there's so much sodium and there's so much this and that, this and that. So again, it just comes down to what kind of diet you want, how much weight you're trying to lose, and pretty much what appeals to you. Now, with my bacon and eggs, I'll also go ahead and scoop up a yogurt as well just so I can have a little bit of dairy intake with my breakfast in the morning uh, they have some really nice flavors I have a huge sweet tooth I have an entire drawer of candy right here that I resist every single day while I'm dieting but I have a huge sweet tooth so I have Boston cream pie and orange cream sickle and I have key lime pie and cafe latte or whatever the limited edition flavor is but it's little things like this that really help you with your diet because you can have one of these and it doesn't taste like cardboard it actually tastes like Boston cream pie or an orange popsicle and to finish off that breakfast 
I will have half a glass of orange juice. The reason I say half a glass is the same reason that I said get yourself a small bowl of Cheerios because do you really need to fill your glass to the brim? Do you really need to fill your glass to the brim? As I mentioned in the first video about eating healthy, it's, it's a whole bunch of little things that you have to cut out. And that extra half a glass of orange juice, that's just one more thing that you're gonna have to burn off. It's one more thing that you have to go through. So when you sit down to eat, think, do you really need to fill your glass to the brim? Or will a half a glass do? And as I mentioned, when it comes to getting your carbs from other places, you can get carbohydrates from orange juice. You can get carbohydrates from yogurt as well. There are carbs in so many things that you wouldn't even imagine. Moving on to lunch, you have a few different options here as well. When it comes to days that I'm working out, again, you can, and you can intake Take more carbohydrates you can intake more things because your body needs the fuel to keep going generally what I like to do is I'll grab a protein bar and a protein shake and just wait a couple hours before I eat again and what I do eat on days when I come from the gym nine times out of ten let me grab the one that's brand new so you can see it is I'll go ahead and just make myself a simple turkey sandwich keep in mind again you're not making a hoagie it's just a simple turkey sandwich for lunch again you need to keep an eye out for a few different things when it comes to preparing your meal because even down to the type of bread that you choose can make a huge difference I know a ton of people out there that are into working out like to get the real hearty wholesome like 15 grain breads and stuff like that I like to just use this 100% whole wheat bread just simply because when it comes comes to all of the nutrients in it, it has the most balanced and basic kind of build to it. The reason I say that is because when it comes to dieting, a lot of times people will focus on one nutrient or one aspect of what they're eating over another. Either they'll focus on the sodium count or they'll focus on the carbohydrates or the total fat and not realize that there's another aspect of it that is just as kind of productive for you. So like I said, this is most balanced, it's just oral wheat. 100% whole wheat bread. I don't know if you're gonna have it in your supermarket or not, but I like it, it tastes good, and it gets the job done. Another tip when it comes to dieting is eat everything brown. If you like white bread, switch to wheat bread. If you like white rice, switch to brown rice. It's good versus bad carbs, and it's just overall healthier for you because that's a whole nother conversation we could have, but just keep in mind, brown is better. So you have your bread. The next thing that gets you in trouble is your topping, your mayo, your mustard, whatever it is that you wanna to add to your sandwich. Still, the point that I'm making is you need to be careful with how much you add and what kind you add. I like to just get regular light mayonnaise and I just put a light coating on each piece of bread and call it a day. If you're the kind of person that wants to glop piles and piles and piles of mayonnaise on your sandwich, then again, it's just counterproductive. Turkey is turkey, it's just the meat, it's kinda hard to mess that up, but I do like to go to the actual deli counter and get a special lower sodium style of turkey. Reason I do that is because unless you actually go and buy a whole turkey and cook it in your oven, no matter what turkey you get from the supermarket, it's gonna have some sort of preservatives on it, it's gonna have sodium in it to an extent. So if you wanna buy a prepackaged turkey, if you don't wanna go to the deli counter because it's either too expensive or whatever, then just keep an eye out for a lower sodium one, one that is a little healthy Healthier, you know, check the nutrition facts and find ones that have lower grams and lower percentages and all of its nutrients. And again, I'm going to say this with so many different things, you don't need to make a tower of turkey on your sandwich. You know, put three or four, maybe five slices of turkey on your sandwich and call it good. The last little thing that could get you in trouble comes down to the cheeses. Now, some of these cheeses are very, very sneaky. I personally prefer provolone cheese. It's my favorite cheese out there. It has 0% carbohydrates. Cheddar cheese has 0% carbohydrates as well. Aside from that, their nutrition values vary in a few different ways. One may have higher cholesterol, one may have higher fat, one may have higher calories. But again, it's one of those things when you go to sit down and make your sandwich or whatever it is you're doing, just check the nutrition facts. You don't have to count calories to do all this stuff. Just generally, if you see something that is low in calories, low in cholesterol, low in fat, go ahead, snag it up, you're good to go. I put just one piece of cheese on my sandwich because you really don't need any more than that. Because again, you're eating to fuel your body until you get to the next meal. If you wanna add anything else to your sandwich, lettuce is always a good alternative. Lettuce is pretty much just crunchy water, shout out to Dame Drops. But just keep in mind, the more that you add to it, it becomes one of those things where the more you have to burn off. So if you don't necessarily wanna eat a super plain sandwich like I do, then just again, just keep in mind everything that you're adding to it. With my sandwich, I like to have a little pack of carrots on the side as well. Like with the apples, I like buying the individually wrapped or individually packaged carrots just because it helps me control my portions. You don't have to buy individually packaged foods or anything like that, because I know they can be a little bit more expensive, but I think this entire pack costs like $1.30. Since I 
have pretty much hit my target goal when it comes to weight loss. I might have another four or five pounds that I would ideally like to lose. I've gone ahead and opened up my diet a little bit and added a few different things to it. One new thing that I'm trying is this new brand of hot dogs I just found called Applegate. Um, just like my bacon, it's turkey hot dogs. And they don't taste like regular hot dogs but they're not a terrible alternative either. Again, because of all the carbohydrates you have with it, this is a meal that I would only ever eat on days when I get back from the gym. The reason that I try these hot dogs out, like I've literally only had them once, is because these were the healthiest hot dogs that I could find from the store. Hot dogs and a lot of processed meats are very, very, very high in sodium. Most of the time, just one link, one hot dog will have like 33% of your daily sodium value in it. So it's really, really hard to have a hot dog in your diet because it just adds fat, it adds cholesterol, it adds a ton of sodium as well, and then your carbohydrates from your hot dog buns and whatnot. But like I said, I've lost a majority of the weight that I wanted to, so I decided to go ahead and give some wiggle room in my diet and try something like this out. Now, per link, it only has 11% sodium. So if I were to watch my sodium intake throughout the day, I could have two hot dogs for lunch and still be okay. For everything else that has 0% carbohydrates, only 5% total fat, one gram of saturated fat, zero trans fat, the cholesterol is minimal as well, so it's really, when it comes to hot dogs, it's incredibly, incredibly a healthy alternative. But like I said, it doesn't necessarily taste like the greatest hot dog in the world. Maybe it needs to grow me a little bit more like the milk and the bacon did. It also allows you to switch things up. So it's something new that I'm trying on my diet. So it may not stick around for very long, but we'll see. For days that I don't go to the gym, what I'll generally do, I'm sure you guys have seen me do this before on the channel, is I will make meatballs. I like to buy this 93% lean, it's, it's honestly the leanest meat that I've found in a while for a reasonable price. Like I think this is like two and a half pounds of meat for 10 bucks. I could probably make 30 meatballs out of this that'll last me the entire week. But it's pure lean ground beef. If, as long as you don't add a whole bunch of cheese or eggs or whatever to it, then it's an incredibly healthy alternative for lunch and it gives you a good amount of protein as well. With my meatballs, I'll go ahead and get a little bit of broccoli as well. I love broccoli. I, I cannot I cannot explain to you how much I love broccoli. So broccoli being on my diet is a huge thing. Moving on to dinner, the last and final meal of the day. One thing that I really, 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 really want to stress is watch out for these. I generally don't tend to eat lean cuisines or uh, supposedly healthy frozen dinner meals all too often. And I say it because when it comes to these, it's another perfect example of it's very, very healthy in one area, but very, very bad for you in another. A lot of times they'll take out a lot of fat content or calories from it and they replace it with sodium because sodium will help with the flavor. So some of these can be very, very high in calories or very, very high in sodium. So I won't say that it's something that you should 100% avoid, but just be very, very careful with these. Definitely check the nutrition facts and read all areas that are involved with it because it can be low in calories, but sky high in sodium and vice versa. But like I said, I don't generally eat frozen meals like that. I just wanted to point it out because I know it is a quick and easy alternative to just going to McDonald's or something like that. Just pop it in the microwave and you're good to go. Now, what I generally eat for dinner is is on one day a week, probably on Sunday nights or whatever, I will go ahead and cook up some chicken breast and some salmon. Now, I like chicken and salmon. You might wanna find a different alternative, but they are both incredibly healthy, just like the pure ground beef in your meatballs. What I'll do is I will go ahead and cover them in olive oil and put a little seasoning on them as well. Seasoning can be your best. A lot of people like to complain that all oh, my food tastes so bland on a diet, I don't have any flavors, I don't have this. If you season it correctly, not too much, because again, there's a lot of sodium in seasoning, but if you season it correctly, you can take this and turn it into the most succulent, juiciest pieces of chicken and fish that you had in your life. Now what I like to do is some weeks I'll alternate, you know, like Monday night I'll eat chicken, Tuesday I'll eat fish, Wednesday I'll eat chicken, Thursday I'll eat fish. Some weeks I'm just more so in the mood for chicken or more so in the mood for fish and I'll just eat it seven days straight. But either way, having pre-planned meals or pre-prepared meals is a lifesaver. Just take the couple hours out once one day out of the week and just prepare your meals for the week. And I'm telling you, instead of getting up and saying, oh, I don't feel like cooking, I'm just gonna go to McDonald's. 
you know, you don't have to. You've already done your cooking. You took the two or three hours it took on Sunday afternoon, and you made your meals for the entire week, and you're good to go. So chicken and fish is what I like. What I couple it with is a little bit of steamed broccoli and some steamed veggies. One thing you need to keep in mind is that these are your sides. They are not the majority of your meal. They're just your sides to accompany your meat. That's pretty much what I eat for dinner, but I wanted to touch on the actual cost of a dinner like this, because a lot of people say, oh, eating healthy costs so much money. I can tell you right now, this bag of frozen veggies cost one dollar. These are a dollar a bag. I could probably get two, maybe three meals worth of veggies out of this. This bag of frozen broccoli cost, I think, like a dollar forty cents or something like that. I could get two, maybe three meals worth of broccoli out of this. Uh, I believe a bag of chicken like this costs of like six or seven dollars, something like that. And then the fish, since it's skinless and individually packaged, costs a little bit more. I think this was like eight bucks, but still, there is twenty or it's a two pound bag, it's probably like 10 or 15 individual salmon fillets in here. Now, I understand that I'm just one person and feeding one person obviously is a lot more inexpensive than feeding multiple people, but I guarantee you in the long run, it is cheaper to eat in and actually cook for yourself than to go out every day or every night or every other day. You know, like I said, for that chicken and that fish total, that entire meal might cost you 20 bucks and you can eat for a week and a half. You know, if you were to go out to McDonald's every night, you could spend five, six dollars a meal at McDonald's. So again, in the long run, it's much cheaper to actually just cook for yourself, get your pre-planned meals, and stick to your diet. With that though, that's pretty much the extent of my own personal diet. My diet is a teeny tiny bit stricter than most people's, especially because I don't allow myself to snack. If I do feel the need to snack, then I might grab a small piece of beef jerky or a pack of carrots or something like that, and that'd be the extent of it. But it's generally not too difficult for me because I don't really diet for long periods of time. I'll diet for two or three months and then take a week or two off and just eat whatever I want, and then I'll diet a little looser for the next two or three months and then take a two or three weeks off. But that just goes back to everyone's diet is different, everyone's diet plans are different so you just need to find what works for you so by all means if you have a different diet plan if you're a dietitian a nutritionist or a personal trainer and you have want to have tips regarding my own diet or a diet that you know works for yourself please by all means leave it in the comment section below it definitely helps the conversation and the discussion here on the channel other people watching may learn something hell I might even learn something as well and that's always a great thing the last thing I want to talk about in this video is I want to challenge you guys. Now, a ton of you guys have been asking me to do these videos talking about getting fit and eating healthy and whatnot. What I wanna do is in about three or four weeks time, I would love it if you guys could go ahead and send me a video of yourself talking about your own weight loss or get fit journey. The way I want to do this is whenever you decide to begin, I want you to weigh yourself on day one. You don't have to share with us your weight, you don't have to show us you're weighing yourself or anything. I want you to weigh yourself on day one and then I want you to wait two weeks. Do not weigh yourself that entire time. Don't weigh yourself. It will be tempting because you want to see if you have progress or anything like that, but don't weigh yourself for two weeks. Then I want you to record yourself again and let us know how much weight you lost. Again, you don't have to tell us how much you weigh, just let us know, give us an update on your actual progress. What I wanna do is I wanna compile all the submissions that we get and make a video about it, and it'll be more of like an inspirational package to those who may be struggling to begin or those who may not know exactly where to start. You know, just to see that other people have started and tried and actually gotten somewhere with it might just be enough motivation to actually get the next person up off the couch into the gym, eating healthy and making that lifestyle change for themselves. I'll go ahead and include more information about that in the description below. So if you're interested in doing that, then by all means, make sure you check it out. And I think there might be one more part of this eating healthy series and that would be involving actually eating out at restaurants and fast food places and stuff like that. Because even though it is fast food places and I've been really shaming McDonald's this entire time, there are still healthy options. If you are out and about and you have to eat out, there are still healthy options for you so there might be a part three of this coming later on but besides that I hope that you guys enjoyed I hope that you may have learned a thing or two I meant to say this at the beginning of the video but I'm, I'm not a nutritionist I'm not a dietitian I'm not a personal trainer I'm only sharing what worked for me with you with that though I will catch you guys next time thank you all so much for your support and thank you for checking out the video I'm out <laughs>